wanted to follow up on Councilmember Casa Constantinidis' questions regarding uh, waste bags to get street litter and graffiti removal. Every morning I wake up and every night I go to sleep to pictures of trash from constituents in my district. On 86th Street. On 86th Street. Uh, so will this $6.7 million help with this trash on 86th Street? Um, I don't have in front of me, I'm sorry, the plan. I assume yes, if they don't have already get Sunday baskets. It is only for Sunday and holiday baskets. That was what I was funded for. Are there any places that receive basket collection twice a day? Because we're only getting it once. Yes, there are places that get basket collection twice a day. Uh, can 86th Street receive basket collection twice a day? I had to, to look at whether or not we're funded to do that. I can't expand baskets where I don't have another person to do it. How many more people do you need to be able to cover my commercial district, CASA's commercial districts, and the districts throughout the neighborhood where we've started to have to launch bids or launch initiatives uh, just to keep the things I'll clean? I'll be happy with. to get back to you about specific, for your specific areas if you wanted basket service twice a day, what those costs would be. I think just as a council, it's good that we've been putting up millions of dollars for the initiative, but I think what would be preferable is do we need 100 more sanitation workers? Is it 200? What number gets us to a place where you have enough people to keep the streets clean on 86th Street and Costa's district and Steve's in everyone's different commercial corridor without having to rely on bids for the basic services that people expect? I mean, I think that we will always have a partnership with bids, the places that get two times pickup or sometimes in bids. Yeah. Um, and it's still a challenge. I still think that there's a, uh, do you a real know? opportunity. There, there, there's still a need to have that partnership there, okay. um, but we can certainly get back to you on what that number looks like, uh, and we can try and give it to you for your district, and then and hopefully scale we can get it, it as part of the executive budget. Along those lines, just for perspective, I'm assuming Atlantic Avenue Barclays has twice a day pickup, as does Fulton Street. I don't know off the top of my head. There, you know, probably. 300 or 400 baskets in those areas, so I'm not sure. Uh, so I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I can uh, certainly get it for you. If I had my basket perfect. book in front of me, I would be able to tell you whether or not those baskets, how many times a day they were getting serviced. The, if, if one of the legion of folks behind you happens to have it, it would be great. But I guess just by way of perspective. There are many places in Manhattan that get multiple times a day pickup, many places like much more like Times Square, Grand, around Grand Central. They're getting basket service so multiple times. Interestingly enough, you mentioned Grand Central. East 86th Street and Lexington is number nine as a subway station within the entire subway system with 20.7 million riders in 2014. Uh, Grand Central is, I think, number six uh, in the system. Atlantic Barclays is number 21. Fulton Street is actually number 11. So when you look at 86th Street and think it's just the Upper East Side, the comparable station is uh, Penn Station. Penn Station, where I'm sure they get twice a day, at 8th Avenue is the same number of riders, I think give or take a couple hundred thousand, mm -hmm. uh, or 7th Avenues. So either one of those would be comparable to 86th Street. So, um, Well, I mean, we can, we can look at whether or not we need to divert resources from other areas to your area. That would be amazing, and then I could not see trash every day of my uh, term. You need to not watch your Twitter feed. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I have to pay attention to my constituents. Along the same lines, we've been focused a lot on ECB violations, which you were talking to, speaking about with the chair. Along those lines, those are quality of life violations mm -hmm. for people who are frequent about leaving their trash out and mm -hmm. not collecting it. Uh, we've been working on it. There's about $1.6 billion in uncollected debt, and we've been working with most of the agencies. We haven't had a chance to actually meet with your specific agency. We've met with almost every other ECB issuing agency. Uh, what can we do as a city to make sure that uh, your violations get paid and improve the quality of life? Lean sale. Uh, so w one of the bills we've proposed is Introduction 810, which would actually say every city agency that deals with ECB or issues licenses, permits, or registrations would have to check everyone else to see whether or not there was outstanding uh, quality of life violations before issuing so that when somebody wants to renew their business license, they're like, huh, you've got 55 sanitation, uh, ECB violations from DSNY. Maybe you have to do something about curing that problem. I'd appreciate that. Perfect. Uh, and uh, Chair, if I may go over five minutes. I appreciate that greatly. The other piece is um, 
a, a little bit sad. I was at the Holmes Towers Association last night. And when I got there, I learned that one of the tenants in the building was crossing the street at 92nd and 1st and was hit by a garbage truck. Uh, so at 92nd and 1st, between August 2011 and February 2014, there were 93 people who were in 48 collisions. At 91st and 1st, there were 66 people in 33 collisions. And so as we're building well, as you are building a marine transfer station there, how do we make sure that nobody dies from getting hit by a garbage truck, which is one of the most dangerous vehicles on the road? All right, no, certainly I, I, I did hear about that tragedy of the, of the private sanitation vehicle and the woman uh, who I guess was hit very, very early, I think Monday morning. Um, uh, and certainly we take safety very, very, uh, I think it's extraordinarily important, and we know how sensitive the community is uh, that you represent about safety in that area. Um, we are doing a lot of things as a department to try and make the department safer. Um, we put all of our employees through defensive driving last year. Um, we are adding side guards to all of our vehicles. One of the most dangerous things for pedestrians is to get pulled in uh, un under the back wheels so that that doesn't happen. Um, we've already installed a great many of these, and we are moving forward to have them installed on even more vehicles as soon as we get in the parts. Um, and, you know, we will look to continue to listen to the community about what more can be done. Um, I, I guess the concern here is these are streets that even before this happened were identified as dangerous. We did a dangerous streets report. Uh, these are streets that it's a corridor, First Avenue, that DOT is looking at as a priority corridor because of the number of accidents and deaths that we're seeing. And this location is actually going to have uh, for-profit private carters driving through it, much like the one that hit a woman yesterday morning and killed her. And so I guess is a residential side street, 91st Street, the right place to have trucks driving uh, when they're going to be interfacing with uh, 2,278 2, residents of a NYCHA development just right there within a block. Are you and talking about 92nd or 91st Street? I'm, I'm doing my best to focus on 91st where that is the current site of it, but within the whole region, 91st Street, which you will be operating on for several years, is dangerous. 92nd is also dangerous. But part of the reason it's so dangerous is this is the densest census tract in the country. This, this is why we built the Second Avenue subway. So I guess the concern just being with so many thousands of people living there, it's already started and we don't even have two to 300 trucks coming every day. Right. So I, I guess mean, is this still the right place to put a garbage This, this is still the right place for us to be citing and supporting the solid waste management plan. Just for a little bit of clarity, and it's, it's, I don't think it will be satisfying to you, but um, the trucks won't be actually physically on 91st Street because it's not a, they're going to be coming up from the south, from 86th, and coming up York into the facility um, because that's the truck route. Uh, so I, I guess. My, my I know it's not completely a truck route for the whole length, but uh, I think that was the what was determined. Currently, sanitation has said that you'll put a flagger in front of the entrance. As we can see, the, the danger is actually the vicinity anywhere there's a turn. Would you put flaggers at every single turn leading into it? And I guess the bigger question, which is a tough question I have to ask, is just how many people need to get injured? How many lives need to get lo lost before you say, you know what? we, sh we People, humans, children, seniors, NYCHA residents can't be in the same place as a 300 truck a day route. I mean, one of the things that I, 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 I understand your concerns, and, and we have committed to putting a, a pedestrian crossing guard there at the bottom of the ramp. Uh, we actually today are operating a facility that has to cross a bike lane on the west side every day. Um, and so, you know, this is. This is something that we have to work around. There are not a lot of places for my sites that are far, far away. I and mean, that's, that's just, you can't hide me. Um, and you know, the same is true, and 
that people don't want my garages anywhere until I guess they get written up in Architectural Digest. I, I liked having your garage in my district. I, I, I will take, if you want to turn the 91st Street Marine Transfer Station into a garage, my uh, it's not big accepts enough. it. It's not big enough, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, no, we need, we need infrastructure. We need waste infrastructure, and, and I don't, I understand that it's challenging, um, but we do operate in some sites where uh, it is already very difficult, uh, you know, to, to deal with the west side and their bike lane, which is that's, crazy. That's a bike lane versus residence. I guess the last piece in wrapping up, and thank you, Chair Reynoso, for the time, is we've now announced zero uh, by 30. We will hit zero waste. We will stop using landfill. So this is a marine transfer to transfer to transfer to transfer to transfer station to landfill. Uh, once we are done with landfill and protressable waste, 14 years from now, what happens to this station? So the one thing, can I do maybe a little bit of happy news for you? Uh, DDC has selected the designer for the 92nd Street ramp, and that contract is currently at the controllers. So that is moving, because I know there have been questions of the commitment to see that through. Um, and so then more broadly, there are a lot of pieces to getting to uh, zero waste to landfills by 2030. That have not that are not in place yet, um, and we need to be able to make sure we have the infrastructure to move waste that we are creating today. Because there's no storage in the city of New York; it's the curb. Um, and just one small correction: your waste will not be going to landfill; it goes to a waste energy facility from 91st Street. That contract's in place with Covanta. And so, is waste energy? within the confines, so as long as we incinerate all of our waste, we meet zero waste, or are we actually trying to get to 100% diversion and trying to recycle and I mean, it is organic? always part of the, part of the pie is to consider uh, other uses that could turn uh, it into um, energy, and even with organics, we're trying to turn that into energy with anaerobic digestion, but we certainly are pushing all of our diversion programs um, across the city evenly, and as you may have heard earlier, some of our programs have a lot more uptake for apartment building owners uh, mm -hmm. than uh, for people who live in single family homes, but we're trying to make it so that you have all the tools to put me out of business. That, that is great, and along those lines, my understanding is my entire district, uh, because of how many schools are participating in organics collection qualifies for organics pickup and participation? All of the schools in your neighborhood should be in the organics program. Which means all the buildings could participate? All the buildings have to do is apply, and we'll add them to the routes as they apply. Great. So we're doing an Earth Day event in my district, and we'd love to have Department of Sanitation do a presentation on how buildings can get uh, organics collection as well as electronics recycling on site. And, and refashioned. And what? and textiles. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair.